Hey guys. All right, this is some of our information on color schemes since we aren't there or if you were absent. Oh, let me get to that right one here. Here we go. All right, so the world of color schemes. <clears throat> let me put this on presentation and we'll get going. All right. Color harmonies is what the book talks about, but the term that we tend to use in the classroom with our books and other things, uh, things you might see online, is we call them color schemes. You'll see down here, a scheme is some kind of a plan or an arrangement. <clears throat> so when we start to paint or create with colors, we have to plan for logical things such as if uh, we're doing it for somebody else, is it a favorite color of theirs? Um, for whether it is um, going to set a kind of mood or a feeling to a picture. So there's several things that have to be considered when you're actually making um, something with color. All right, our first set of colors that we could work with would be called a monochromatic color scheme. The word mono means one, all right? The word chroma means color. So if you're painting a picture monochromatically, you're basically painting it with one color and all of its variations and changes that you can make. Well, we've made changes, right? We've learned how to make changes in a color through value, down here, white all the way to black. We've made colors change in terms of intensity, where they dull down. Um, so we've had some variation and changes of how we can make colors. The picture here of the girl laughing, we can see all of the details and all because of the change of values that the artist has used to paint that child's face. They're definitely different up next to each other, so we can tell the form and all of her face. Here's some other examples of monochromatic. Um, photographers will sometimes set a mood by, by finding items that they could take pictures of that are very thematically similar. We know our, ti our beloved tiger is often painted in oranges and yellows um, as our mascot, but he looks like a sad tiger uh, when you start painting him with a variation of cool colors. Cool colors tend to give us sort of a, 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 ro a reflective or a, uh, a restful feeling. Um, Patterns and all can be creative uh, using all different variations of values and then just an example of some changing values here to the left. Set number two, complementary colors. We've already talked about complements because we had to to be able to talk about changing intensities, right? Where we took colors that were opposite each other in the color wheel like blue and orange or like in this one here is a yellow orange and a blue violet. <clears throat> Any two colors directly opposite each other are going to have some kind of effect on each other. The book talked about if you put those next to each other, um, they tend to vibrate and create excitement in the eye. Um, but we can use and paint a picture with just those colors as well. Um, this photograph over here captures the orangeness of the stone uh, or the rock that was right next to the blue reflected colored water has a nice complementary color scheme. Um, a lot of athletic teams will use complementary colors with the Celtics. Um, you know, the blue and oranges are also happening in like the Miami Dolphins. So there's a lot of different teams that will use those complementary colors because they excite the audience even more. If your eyes are excited and you feel that through physical changes in your eyes, subtly you're going to be more excited about the game as well. Um, this down here at the bottom is a watercolor done mostly with blue, green, and red, orange. And notice what happens when they start to merge. Okay, That idea of creating some kind of neutral or brownish color, even a grayish color, starts to happen with some colors that are directly opposite each other on the color wheel. 
Um, home interior decorators look at um, how you can play with complementary colors uh, with them as well. This is a bit dramatic to make an entire room blue and orange, but you can see how they are using uh, various shades of lighter and more neutral colors in their palette to kind of decorate a home. Our third set, analogous, analogous. Analogous colors are any three or four colors next door to each other on the color wheel. We'll typically be using them in threes rather than fours, but look how yellow green, green, and blue green are right next door to each other. What do they tend to have in common? What color that makes yellow green, green, and blue green ties them together? Any takers? Ding, 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 time's up. Yellow. Because yellow is in yellow-green, right? It takes yellow and blue to make green, so it's in green, and therefore it's also in blue-green because there's green in there. So yellow is a parent color that travels through each one of those colors. So there's some harmoniousness going on. They're in harmony with each other because they share a parent. So Next door neighbors there are quite significant in kind of setting a mood or a feeling. Um, check this girl out. She's done in positive and negative, not a whole lot of detail, but she's done with analogous colors. There's the yellow, the yellow oranges, the red oranges. They're all kind of neighboring each other. She kind of looks like Girl on Fire, right, <laughs> from Hunger Games. Um, but there's a warm feeling that you get. You might look at it and think that she's kind of angry or upset. Um, sometimes fiery red colors and warm colors like that can read as anger or upset. Um, this quilt on the right-hand side has got all the blues, blue-greens, blue-violets. Um, it could be seen as something comforting, calming, because of those blue colors. They're kind of in contrast with each other a bit. <clears throat> Nature has given us the most beautiful analogous creature yet, the peacock. Look at this with the yellow greens, the blue greens, the blues, all the way to some of the blue violets. It's a gorgeous natural example of neighboring colors. Like we talked before, photographers will sometimes change things, add things. Look at all the warm colors the oranges, the reds, the red oranges, even some values of pink, reds in her eye makeup and all um, that kind of warm this whole picture up, including the oranginess of her hair. Um, this was sort of the beginning of a blues festival poster. Huh? Get it? Blues. There's blues in it, right? And so they've used blues and blue greens and values of those. Uh, famous artists have used these colors before. This is from artist Georgia O'Keeffe, where she did a lot of close-ups of flowers that were out in the desert where she uh, lived. And this tubular plant has lots of blue greens and blues and blue violets, uh, all within the colors to make it very harmonious. All right. <clears throat> Group three, split complements. We know that complements are directly opposite each other, right? So we got red, orange, and blue, green, and we got yellow and violet across from each other. But what if you wanted to work with a few more colors? <coughs> Think that, uh, you know, okay, yellow and, and, and uh, violet are great, but what if I wanted to add a little bit more color to that? Well, sure, you can split a complementary color. So check this out. Here's blue, green. Blue-green would work great with red-orange, right? Because they are opposites. Well, if you want to work with a few more colors than just those two in a picture, they're taking here the red and the orange individually to work with the blue-green. So a split complement is taking a color and then using the neighbors of the true complement rather than the complement. So I could paint a picture with all the different values of red, 
all the different values of orange and all the different values and intensities and changes of blue green and they would look really strong together in a picture because orange by itself and red by itself all right are the basis of what red orange was and so any of those kinds of hues and changes are going to look good with blue green Some examples of some split complements, the one that we just saw, the blue-green splitting off from its, its base color for an orange and a red. We've got red-orange doing the same thing, red-orange coming over. Instead of taking blue-green, it's going to take green and blue separately. You can do this with any of the colors or uh, complement sets that you wish. There's some dramatic effects that start to happen um, with such color schemes as a split. Um, here's one that's a great example of the red-orange going across and using blue and then green rather than blue-green, right? It divided it up and it used it in more than one place, which is kind of cool. All right, grouping number four, I think we're up to double split complements. Okay, so in the last one, we took a color and we went from one side and we went over and we didn't take the color directly opposite, we used the next door neighbors, all right? In this case, say you really liked a set of colors. Say I really love like blue, green, and red, orange. Well, instead of taking blue, green, and red, orange directly across from each other, okay, you take red and orange and blue and green. They're neighbors on either side of that original split complement set. Aha! And automatically, you have four colors that you can now paint with. So again, I took, instead of using blue, green, and red, orange, I took the red and orange and blue and green. Again, the neighbors of a set of complements. And again, you can use them with black and white to change their lights and darks. You can add them into each other to kind of change their intensities. All right. This picture here of the lady with the ice cream cone was painted in the 1960s. So that explains her bathing suit style, right? All right. It was done by a gentleman who used very vibrant colors. If you look into her outfit, it is the split complementary set, uh, I mean the double split complementary set that I just talked about. It is not just blue, green, and red, orange. No, 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 he's broken it down. So he's got blues and greens. We see those. You can even see the blues highlighted in her hair in different places, right? And the green is obviously in her outfit. Then we have not red orange, but we have oranges. Different values of orange make her skin tones, right? And then we have the reds that are popping through the outfit and even the reds that pop up in outlines on her body, her earrings, her pinks that come in from the lipstick, the pinks that are happening inside of the ice cream cone, the orange of the ice cream cone. So orange, red, blue, and green, and all of their different values are happening, and even intensities are all happening in this picture. This is a great example of double splits because they could have just been blue, green, and red, orange, Nope, he dissected them, he took them apart, and he was just using red, orange, blue, and green. So our fifth set of colors deals with dividing the color wheel in half. If you were looking at the color wheel and we had to draw a line down the center of it somewhere to divide its two halves, we would have to look at what was on one half and what was on the other half and where would we divide it? Well, you could divide it between red violet all the way to yellow green across the wheel. And anything that is in between those two colors on the color wheel, such as red violet, violet, blue violet, blue, blue green, green, and yellow green, 
Those are all considered what I mentioned earlier as cool colors. All right. The warm colors could be the other half between red, violet, and yellow, green, such as red, violet, red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, and yellow, green. Now, if I look at this butterfly picture here on the right, yes, it has some greens in it, right? Some yellow greens and even some darker greens, but predominantly the majority of the percentage of this picture is in the oranges, the yellows, the yellow oranges. It seems and feels very warm. This picture of the crashing waves against the rocks, kind of an off the ocean or the beach area, these are all very cool colors. This, yes, there's some splashes of red. I can see some of those popping in on some of the rocky areas, but the majority, again, the highest percentage of colors in this one are greens and blues and yellow greens that are really faded. Dark blue violets, almost navy blues are happening in some areas. So it's primarily a cool picture. Let's go back to this girl picture that we saw earlier. Earlier we saw her as girl on fire. She had all of the oranges and the analogous colors. Well, now she's got some neutrals and some warm colors, all right, with the warms of the browns that could have been made by some in, um, intensity mix. We have our red and we have our yellow that are both warm colors. And then here's how it looks with just cool colors put in. We've got blues of different varying degrees, all right? The differences between warm and cool colors, they set a mood. She might feel very sad, very sullen, uh, depressed over here. Um, she might be kind of moody feeling over here. Um, so people can sometimes read different personalities based on whether colors are cool or warm. All right, number six our last set of colors. These are on the color wheel as well. They call them triadic colors. I mentioned the word triad to you when we first started learning color and the color wheel. We looked at the triad of the primary triad colors, right? We had primaries of red, yellow, and blue, the parent colors that make every other color on the wheel. If you add two primaries together, we got our secondary triad. All right, you can have a tertiary triad as well. They are basically any colors that are equally separated on the color wheel. So if you count from one color and go one, two, three, four to the next color, that's going to be another color you pick up and you continue on counting one, two, three, four, and you get another color. You could, if you're looking at a color wheel, have colors like yellow orange and you count over four and you end up at blue green and you count over four and you end up over at red violet. So triad colors can happen with any three colors that are equally separated generally by four spaces on the color wheel. Again, you could paint with those colors pure, such as these are primary colors used by artist Mondrian, who started to just play with composition and repetition of colors. He loved these pure primary colors. He loved the fact that they were just kind of given to us by God. They were the purest of all the colors. They weren't made by mixing anything together. So he used them just as they were. This artist down here made a landscape using obviously lots of values, of the reds, the yellows, and the blues. It's a very dramatic kind of a landscape picture.